Okay, um, once again, good morning to everyone. So for this morning, um, for today, our discussion will be about lipids and lipoproteins. So this discussion is divide, also divided into three, okay? So the first part is more on an introduction on the different lipids and lipoproteins. The second part, I will be discussing the different minor lipoproteins. And the third part will be about uh, the different laboratory tests needed in the determination and in the measurement of your lipoprotein. So as you can see um, in your screen right now, okay, this is our outline. Okay, this is the outline of our discussion. So the first um, topic that we're going to cover will be the forms of lipids until the general lipoprotein structure and then lipoprotein uh, physiology and metabolism. And then lipid and lipoprotein population distribution. So how are they distributed in our body? How are they distributed in the different um, different individuals? We're going to discuss them today. And finally, okay, finally, we're also going to talk about the different lipid and lipoprotein measurement. So just what I mentioned, this is divided into three. Although the second part is shorter, um, that's why it will be discussed all together by Thursday. Okay, you'll be receiving your asynchronous class on Thursday. Uh, and uh, ayun din. Okay, you'll be receiving your um, asynchronous class on our second meeting this week. Okay, so let's get started. So we're going to talk about lipids and lipoproteins. So similarly with your carbohydrates, your lipids and lipoproteins are also uh, one of the biomolecules that we consider very important in the body. So there are actually three okay your carbohydrates your lipids and also your proteins so remember that all those three okay are very essential in our body essential in a sense that it is being utilized by our body um by the cells to do their function they are also the one that produces the structure of your cells so just take for example your carbohydrates your carbohydrates are also component of your plasma membrane similarly to your lipids they're also component of your lipid bilayer, the one that you see on your plasma membrane that provides a semi-permeable membrane for your cells. So as you can see, okay, this carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins, all of them are needed in the formation of your cells, in the functioning of your cells, and in the maintenance or in the homeostasis of our body. So to get started, let's talk about the different forms of lipids for today. So when we talk about lipids, okay, it is very much synonymous to fats. Okay, it is synonymous to fats. So lipids are soluble in nonpolar organic solvents. So when we say nonpolar uh, non organic solvent, these are generally hydrophobic um, solvents like chloroform and ether. Okay, chloroform and ether. So your lipid can be dissolved in there, can be soluble in your um, non-polar organic solvent, but are relatively insoluble to your polar sub solvent such as your water. And listen up, guys, because this part is already very important. Um, the reason why today the title of our discussion is lipids and lipoproteins because of this um, fact about your lipids. Lipids are insoluble in your polar solvent such as your water. And if you are going back to your anatomy, your plasma, okay, your blood, your plasma is seven is composed of almost 90% of water. Okay, 90% of your plasma is made up of water. So meaning to say, these lipids cannot be um, transported in your plasma on its own. Kaya it will need the different carrier proteins. And these carrier proteins at, are what we call your lipoproteins. Can I see a raise of if we're clear on that part? Again, your fats or your lipids, they are insoluble in water. That's why they would need carrier molecules to help them be transferred from one place into another. And that is what we call generally as your lipoproteins, okay? And there are different lipoproteins. Just as today, we will be discussing different forms of lipids. There are also different forms of lipoproteins that carries the respective lipid all throughout our body. So 
going back to your lipids. Your lipids, similarly to your carbohydrates and your protein, they are also composed major, uh, composed of carbons. But for lipids, they are composed of mostly carbon-hydrogen bonds, okay, carbon-hydrogen bonds, which we will be discussing later. Okay, so generally, once again, your lipids are water insoluble. When we say water insoluble, it is synonymous to nonpolar. So get acquainted with these terms because you'll see this more often in your exams and in your quizzes. So again, they are insoluble or they are nonpolar. That's why they need to be transported by your lipoprotein. So generally, this is our these are our lipids. So your lipids can be of different forms. There are different forms of lipids. But generally, your lipids are rich source of energy and it's an efficient way to store excess calorie. That's why, as you all know, guys, right now, no, um, when you eat a lot of carbohydrates, remember, remember our discussion about um, the metabolic processes in the body concerning your carbohydrate. If there are excess glucose inside the body, it will be stored up through the process of lipogenesis. Your carbohydrate will be converted, becoming now your fats. And these fats will now be stored in your body as not only as insulators, okay, but also as way to store excess calories. Okay. So again, your lipids, these are rich source of energy. I want you to, if you're writing down, I want you to highlight the rich source of energy. Because as early as now, I also want to get this across already that your lipids okay are yes rich source of energy except okay except for cholesterol i think i was able to mention this already during our carbohydrate lecture but again i'm repeating it for the sake of our discussion today again your cholesterol cannot be used as energy source okay but all the other lipids can be utilized as energy source what process is needed for me to utilize my fats, my lipids into energy. What process should take place first? Okay, I'm giving you five seconds. What process should take place first before my lipids or my fats can be utilized as energy source? Can be utilized, huh? not stored. Okay, what process is needed by the body for the fats, the triglyceride? can be utilized as energy source. Okay, assuming that I'm seeing answers like lipogenesis, it's not. Lipolysis, not also. Lipolysis, ano? It's your, correct, it's your gluconeogenesis. Okay, it's your gluconeogenesis. Remember that lipolysis is merely the, take for example, um, you have excess calorie. You store it, that is lipogenesis. When you try to use it up na, like when you try to retrieve it from your storage, that is the process called lipolysis. We break down the fat into simpler form like your glycerol and your fatty acid. But for it to be utilized as energy, we need to undergo the process gluconeogenesis. Again, the, the science behind your ketogenic diet as well. So having said that, Okay, having said that the lipids, except for um, cholesterol, are rich source of energy and are very efficient way to, to store excess calorie, these are also integral part of your cellular membrane. Again, I mentioned this a while back. Remember your phospholipid bilayer, that is a kind of lipid. And not only phospholipid bilayer because you also have cholesterol um, units found in your, in your cellular membrane. Again, providing providing a semi-permeable entry of your substances. And finally, your lipids are also important because they are precursor to your steroid hormone. And I want you to put behind this is that the main lipid, okay, the lipid which are main precursor of your steroid hormones are your cholesterol. Your cholesterol cannot be utilized as energy, but they are important precursor for your steroid hormone. When we say steroid hormones, these are usually your adrenal, uh, your uh, glucocorticoids, ayan, your glucocorticoids, and in, most importantly, your sex hormones, your testosterone, progesterone, estrogen. So all of them are actually what? They are um, 
descendants from your cholesterol. Okay? So, with that being said, okay, this lipid, uh, with that being said, ayan. So, this oil that you see here, again, they are important because they are energy source of the body and they are also major component of your plasma membrane. Now, having said that, let's go straight and talk about the different forms of lipids. So, we are going to talk about your fatty acids, your phospholipids, your triglyceride, and your cholesterol. For this morning, um, I will be discussing the forms briefly because um, ideally, they should have been discussed to you already during your um, biochemistry so that I'll be able to concentrate more on lipoproteins. But again, I also understand that there are some gaps that had happened during your biochem. So we'll be discussing them quickly. Okay. So, sir, what do we need to get from this? What do we need to get from this discussion on the different forms of lipids? Number one is obviously what are the different forms of lipids. Second is their unique characteristic. What are the unique characteristic of each um, forms of lipids because that's what makes them different from the other, okay? And of course, um, aside from what makes them different, what are the different types if there are different types um, of this uh, lipids that we're going to discuss, okay? So before we get started, can I see a raise of hand so that I'll be able to know if we're on the same page? Can I see a raise of hand if we're ready to go, Okay. Thank you so much. Now, let's talk about your fatty acids. So, your fatty acid has a carboxyl group. Okay, as you can see, it has a carboxyl group at a polar end and a hydrocarbon chain on a non-polar end. Meaning to say, your fatty acids are amphiphatic. Okay? Meaning, to, uh, lagay mo na dyan, or put that beside the, your note. Your fatty acids are amphiphatic. When we say amphiphatic, these are compounds that has a polar and a non-polar group. In other translation, it is a type of compound that has a water-loving and a water-fearing uh, group, okay? Water-soluble and water-insoluble group, okay? So again, that is your fatty acid. They are ampi, amphipathic, okay? They are amphiphatic because they have the carboxyl group, okay? And a nonpolar hydrocarbon group on the nonpolar end. So, a fatty acid that occurs in living system normally contains an even number of carbon atoms and hydrocarbon chains is usually unbranched. So, kung makikita ninyo, um, these ones are no longer branched into, uh, it has no connections already or bonds connected to it already. So, these are usually unbranched. Okay, fatty acids are rarely found free in the nature, but they, they form parts of um, many commonly occurring lipids. So, in simplest translation, most of the time, you do not see fatty acids alone, okay? Usually, fatty acids are always in, um, always bound to another compound. Like, take for example, your fatty acids, the one in our, in our body, okay, the most, okay, I will say most, because I will um, tell you something later. Okay, most of the fatty acid in our body are in the form of triglyceride. Your fatty acid attached to your glycerol, that is the most common form of fatty acid seen in our body. Although, okay, although I just want you guys to write this down. This is um new um, discovery about a short chain fatty acids. Okay, there are short chain fatty acids that are usually byproduct of bacterial metabolism in our gut. Remember your gastrointestinal tract. Um, there are billions, if not trillions, of bacteria, fungi, and other organisms living in our body. So if you ever felt alone, diba? you're not alone because there are a lot of organisms living in you, okay, in and through you. So they actually produce short-chain fatty acids. Those short-chain fatty acids are actually um, predisposing factors to different diseases, okay? They found out that these short-chain fatty acids can actually influence either your immune system and even your metabolism. Remember, take for example... 
um, we have student A. Student A diet is all meat, proteins, no, none of the veggies. And then the, ano naman, student B, we have a vegan, only eats, ano, only eats, uh, like a, a strict vegan talaga. Their microbiome inside the body are different. When I say microbiome, the bacteria living inside their body are different. And so, the ox also produces different fatty acids. That's why you would see a complete difference in the build and the health of a, of a, a patient based only on their diet. Sabi nga nila, you are what you eat. That is actually true. Okay? That is actually true. So again, going back, I just had to say that because um, those are one of the rare cases that you would see a fatty acid free in our body. Because most of the time, again, they are in, com um, in combination or they are bound to a different um, compound such as your glycerol. So your fatty acids, again, your fatty acids, being aside from being amphiphatic, they can also be classified into two, your saturated fatty acid and your unsaturated fatty acid. So if we say saturated fatty acids, saturated fatty acid, if they are only one single bond on the chain, and that single bond in your chain are usually found in your carboxyl group. Carboxyl group, which is the polar or the water-loving group. Okay, so remember that the saturated part, okay, uh, when you say saturated, you only have one single bond or uh, one single bond, okay, you're only one single bond in the, um, in the chain, okay. So examples of your saturated fatty acid are your lauric, your myristic, your palmitic, your steric, your arachidinic, or your arachidonic acids. So these are your... Uh, these are your saturated fatty acids, okay? Saturated fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids um, are the complete opposite of your unsaturated fatty acid. Why? Because your unsaturated fatty acids, okay, your sat unsaturated fatty acid, these are carbon-carbon double bonds in a chain and the fatty acid is now considered to be unsaturated. So, in an unsaturated uh, fatty acid, the stereochemistry of the double bond is usually cis, okay? Usually cis. So, when we say cis and trans, remember these are just stereochemistry. Similarly to our discussion in carbohydrates, di ba meron tayong D-glucose, meron din tayong L-glucose. These are more on the orientation of your fatty acids. Can I see a raise of any for clear on this part? We, um, when we talk about unsaturated fatty acid there are cis unsaturated fatty acid and trans unsaturated fatty acid so what do you mean by cis and trans cis and trans are usually the formation okay or the configuration of your lipids okay so in the body most of the time okay what what we have are your cis okay the most common is your cyst. The one that you see on your animals, the one that you see on your food products. Uh, when I say food products, yung mga natural lang. Ha. Uh, take for example, your meat, your the the fat of your meat, di ba? Inside our body, usually, those, unsatur those unsaturated fatty acids are actually in cyst form. Okay? They are in cyst form. So I want you first to look at the for the 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 Fatty, your unsaturated fatty acid. So as you can see, your unsaturated your unsaturated fatty acid, they have um not just the double bond in your carboxyl, but also in uh, in their carbon chain. So you have your linoleic, your li linolenic, and your arachidonic acids. Okay, your arachidonic, uh, your arachidonic acid. Okay, your arachidonic acid. And before I forgot, okay, so here. Um, there's also another form of your your fatty acid, which we call now your trans fat or your trans fatty acid. Trans fatty acid is not commonly found in the nature. Why not commonly found in the nature? Because these are synthetically being done or chemically being done in the uh, laboratory or in the manufacture in the factory where food are being manufactured. And the process, okay, the process of how we do or how we create trans fat are what we call now your hydrogenation, okay? Hydrogenation is the process of 
uh, creating an unsaturated fat. But the problem is, since this is a synthetic way of creating your unsaturated fat, you're not creating cis unsaturated fatty acids, but rather trans um, unsaturated fatty acids. Sir, why do you need to highlight this? Okay? Why do I need to highlight this? It is for the reason that trans fat are actually dangerous in our body. Okay? Oops, wait now. Trans fat are actually dangerous in our body. The one that form or the one that uh, the one that um, blocks the artery of your blood or of your heart, these are actually uh, trans fats. Okay? Those are trans fats. Okay? Bakit trans fat? Because I, um, as you can see, okay, this is not a natural um, type of fatty acid, meaning to say our body also doesn't have the natural way to um, digest or metabolize these trans fat in our body. That's why if you go to your groceries, diba? if you go to your groceries, you would usually see their um, labels that would say zero trans fat. Okay? Zero trans fat. Because again, a process of hydrogenation may prolong. Okay? But maybe some of you naman will, will wonder, sir, why do we use kasi hydrogenation? Hydrogenation kasi would uh, prolong the storage of your fatty acid, of your oils, of your fats. But in uh, in return, you preserve it, it, you created trans fat. And those trans fat are harmful to the health of humans. Okay? So can I share a Savani for clear? Okay. So there. Um, there's a question here. Sir, pwede po bang maging artificial cysts if same lang yung orientation or pag synthetic trans na automatic? Okay. So most of your uh, most of your synthetic na fatty acids are I say synthetic in a, in a way that you are trying to prolong them, okay? You're trying to prolong them. So hindi siya ano um hindi siya based on the orientation so lahat ng cis natural okay all your cis uh, fatty acids are natural all the um all the other fatty acids okay those are um trans fat na kapag synthetic and let us just draw the line no when you say synthetic we you um applied hydrogenation to prolong its ano to prolong its longevity or yung storage niya. Okay? So, yun lang naman. Okay? So, remember that ha. So, the process kasi once na take for example, you have a you have a unsaturated your you have a fatty acid and you want to have a particular uh, you want to change the orientation. Hydrogenation talaga yung solution. So, when you do that, you create trans fat in return. Okay? So I hope I answered you the question on the chat box. So there, these are examples. So as you can see here, um, I'm not gonna, ano na, I'm not gonna discuss this further. So um, as you can see, a palmitoleic, uh, a palmitoleic uh, fatty acid has 16 carbon. So that the 16 is to one. So the one represent the number of double of double bond. So it has one double bond aside na ito ha aside from the carboxyl group and as you can see the double bond is found on the ninth carbon so that's how you interpret it oleic you have 18 carbon with one double bond found on the ninth carbon you have um, arachidonic you have 20 carbons 20 carbons with four uh, double bonds and those double bonds are found in the fifth and the eighth and the eleventh and in the fourteenth um carbon of your chain okay so again the notation used in your fatty acid indicates the number of the carbon okay uh the car the number of the carbon atoms and the number of your double bond so if you say 18 is 2 0 that denotes that the 18 car uh, carbon saturated fatty acid with no double bond on the other hand, when we say 18 is to 1, this denotes that that 18 carbon fatty acid is number 1, a, an unsaturated fat, and also um, containing one double bond already. Okay, so depending na lang on the, on the notation, if they would include the number or the location of the double bond. Okay, so 
aside from that, an another thing that I also want you guys to remember is that your unsaturated fatty acids has lower melting point than saturated fatty acids. So when we say lower melting point, okay, they have lower melting point. Your unsaturated fat are usually liquid in room temperature. Ayan. They're usually liquid in room temperature. These are like your cooking oils, di ba? Yung nakikita ninyo na ginagamit natin pang cook, okay? So those are unsaturated fatty acids. So in a room temperature, okay, in a room temperature, your saturated are solid, your unsaturated fatty acids, these are actually in liquid form, okay? They are in liquid form. One moment, okay? Just had to turn on some lights. Okay. So they are, again, um, they are um, solid and liquid in room temperature. So that is your saturated and your unsaturated, respectively. So that these are, again, your fatty acids. And remember, okay, your plant oils, okay, ayan, the, your unsaturated fatty acids, they are usually liquid in room temperature. Okay. So... Take for example, um, yung canola oil. You want to prolong the, the longevity of your canola oil. Some kasi would resort to hydrogenation. And when they resort to hydrogenation, they create trans fat. And when you use that in cooking or in preparing your meals, you also um, ingest those trans fat that get deposited in your heart or in other part of your body, causing coronary, you're causing um, cardiovascular diseases in the patients or in the humans okay so these are your fatty acids so i hope we're clear with fatty acids so just to wrap it up fatty acid you have um they are amphifatic there are two types of um two types of fatty acid your saturated and your unsaturated fatty acid so i hope you will be able to differentiate one from the other now let's proceed to your second phospholipid second um lipids which are your phospholipid your phospholipid are also known as your phosphoacylglycerol so in such lipid molecule you have two fatty acids so sabi ko nga sa inyo your fatty acids are usually bound to other compounds here when we say phospholipid you have two fatty acids that are sterified to your glycerol molecule when we say sterified we we uh what we mean is sterified is that they are bound to your glycerol because sterified because remember ester bonds um if you're in your carbohydrate it is glycosidic bond that connects one monosaccharide to another monosaccharide in your phospholipid okay they are ester bonds okay ester bonds are the uh, are what you can see among your lipids so two fatty acids are connected to your glycerol molecule um, resulting to a compound called your phosphatidic acid or your phosphoacylglycerol so one molecule of, of phosphoric acid can form ester bonds both to glycerol and to other and to some other alcohol creating your phosphatidyl esters Okay, and as early as now, I just want everybody to know that your phospholipid is actually the most abundant type of lipid inside our body. Again, your phospholipids or your phosphoacylglycerol is the most abundant phospholipid inside our body. There are some uh, phospholipids that are considered to be important, okay, like the following, okay, you have um, I think I will be able to show it later. Ayan. So again, your phosphoacylglycerol are the most abundant. So as you can see, this is your phosphatidic acid and this is your phosphatidyl um, ester. Phosphatidyl ester because it's already is in com um it was already um bound to other fatty acids. So kung makikita ninyo, it's already connected to your sterile. So this in itself is your phosphatidyl esters. Okay, Phosph phosphatidyl esters. And this is your phosphatidic acid. So in our body, okay, in our body, there are different forms of phospholipid. So th these are very small, but um, these are just figures. And 
what are these um, phospholipid we're talking about? So these are the phospholipid we are going to talk about. So again, phospholipids are most the most abundant lipid in the body. It also serves as a surfactant. That's why if you guys are already on your amniotic fluid in your hematol, in your um, AUBF, you'd actually um, see there your phospholipid um, surfactant ratio so that you would see um, the normal... Um, the normal development of your fetus. But inside our body, the, mo the most common forms of phospholipid are as follow. Your lecithin, also known as your phosphatidylcholine, your sphingomyelin, and your cephalin. So they are the three most common, most important phospholipid in the body. And let me try to explain why phospholipid is the most abundant lipid in the body. Remember that your body is made up of different cells. And for every all your cells, like literally every single cell that you have in the body, they all have a phospholipid bilayer, making your phospholipid the most important, not naman the most important, but making your phospholipid the most abundant lipid in the body. Okay? So can I see our of any for clear on that, um, on that part? Okay. So again, ha, remember your lecithin, your phosphatidylcholine, your sphingomyelin, and your cephalin are the three forms um, most commonly found in our body. So ma majority, 70% are your lecithin, 20% are your, your sphingomyelin, and 10% are your cephalin. So a quick um, highlight for your sphingomyelin. So your sphingomyelin is the only phospholipid in membranes that is not derived from glycerol, but are actually derived from an amino alcohol called sphingosin. Okay, that's why kanina di ba sabi natin um your phospho um your phospholipid. Okay, your phospholipid can either be bound to your glycerol or can be bound to other alcohols. An example of this now is your sphingosine. So these are essential components of your cell membrane. And if you have a, a inborn error of metabolism, your sphingomyelin can accumulate in your liver and spleen of a patient suffering from Niemann Pick disease. Your Niemann Pick disease is because you have a deficiency in an enzyme that metabolizes or that digests your sphingomyelin. Okay, that digests your sphingomyelin. Therefore, you would, um, this fats now will accumulate, okay, kasi lipids pa rin yan eh. It will accumulate in your liver and also in your spleen. And at the same time, there's also a white blood cell um, specific to your Niemann Pick disease. Um, the one that are that the one with uh, vacuums, okay, because of the formation of your, uh, because of the formation of those, um, because of the formation of those fats in your RBC, and because of the formation of your fats on those WBC rather, okay, WBC, okay, so. With that being said, ayan, that is for our phospholipid. So quick review for our phospholipid. Let me go straight and ahead to the other form of lipid. Next is we have your triglyceride. Okay? Your triglyceride or your triacylglycerol, aka neutral fat. Okay? Why do we call it neutral fat? Again, neutral fat because they don't have charge. So your triglyceride, compared to your phospholipid your phospholipid has how many i know how many fatty acid on the chat box on answer me in 5 seconds 5 how many fatty acids does a phospholipid has phospholipid ah phospholipid 5 4 3 2 1 okay your phospholipid it has two your triglyceride, kaya siya tinawag na triglyceride, it has three molecules of fatty acid attached to a glycerol which serves as its backbone. Okay? I want, to, I want you to look at this now again. So here, this is your phospholipid. So as you can see, this is your glycerol. And then one fatty acid, another fatty acid. Just two. Unlike your triglyceride, this is your triglyceride. Okay? Your glycerol, the backbone. And then you have one, two, Three, three fatty acids. Are we clear? Now, these um, triglycerides now may are considered to be main storage of lipid in man in the form of your adipose tissue. 
Okay? So, low calorie intake would mean low triglyceride level. Why? Because if your calorie um, intake is low, it would just be enough for your body's need for that particular day, then you won't have excess calorie that needs to be deposited or that needs to be stored in the form of your fat. Okay? That's why for some who also want to lose weight, they are doing the calorie deficit. Why calorie deficit? Because it is known that when you decrease your calorie intake, okay, the deposition of your fat would also decrease. Not only that, if your body needs more energy, they will just simply use up the one that are stored. Okay? So, ang nangyaya, what happened kasi in our body is that if your body is already full of fat, full of storage, and you keep on eating excessively, it's like hoarding in real life. Okay? You hoard a lot of things in your house that become cluttered. Similarly, in our body, instead of using up those fats inside our body, we keep on eating and eating. Then, we just accumulate and accumulate more fat in our body. Okay? But, um, just, uh, I also realize... Okay, I also realized that a lot of a lot of people already have considered fat as a bad thing. Okay, when we say fat, um, it's already something that they would avoid. When we say sugar, it's already something that they should avoid, which is also very wrong. Why? Because fats, sugar, and even amino acids are still important in your body. You need that to function. You need that to your for your body to grow to repair and develop. And if you try to deprive yourself from that, it will also just lead to a more detrimental diseases. That's why at the end of the day, the best action, I'm, I'm also guilty with this, but the best thing to actually have is a balanced diet. When you say balanced diet, you have a piece of carbohydrate, you have your lipids, you also have your proteins. You just don't simply eradicate your carbohydrates. Okay? So that's very important. Okay, so why am I saying this? Because triglyceride might seem to be so negative to other people, especially those with dyslipidemia, those with cardiac, uh, with cardiac diseases. But the thing is, your, your triglycerides are actually important factor in our body until it became in excess in your body. Okay, maganda naman yung naidulot niya ni eh, hanggang nung sumobra, dun siya nagkaroon ng masamang effect in our body. So, the function of your triglyceride, okay, when they are being metabolized, when your triglyceride are being metabolized, they are released into their um, components. You have your glycerol and you also have your fatty acids. Your your, the fatty acids are released into the cell and are converted to energy. And this energy are what... Uh, this energy... Um, are being produced now in the body through the process of gluconeogenesis. And aside from that, your triglyceride also provide an excellent insulation, di ba? So, um, an excellent insulation, so yung mga mas uh, fluffy like us, we um, we have our own natural insulators, okay? And also shock absorbers. So, those are important functions of your triglyceride. Again, when triglycerides are in excess, they, it is bad for your body. But if it is in moderation, they are very much useful and important in the body. Can I see a raise of hand if we're clear, people? Okay. Thank you so much. So, always remember that. Okay. So, these are your triglycerides. Ayan. So, in your triglyceride, when your organism uses fatty acids, Fatty acid, the ester links of your triglycerol or your triglyceride are being hydrolyzed by your enzyme called lipases. I just need you to remember lipases because this will be important in our succeeding discussion. So if I personally ate, take for example, I ate my, my, uh, my triglyceride and then it will be used up by my body as energy source, it will need to be um, release first. Again, it will not be using the um, triglyceride as a whole. It will hydrolyze it first. Parang yung starch. Okay, your starch is a complex compound that needs to be hydrolyzed or digested before metabolite. Similarly, in your 
um, similarly in your triglyceride, it needs first to be hydrolyzed into different components. So you already have one glycerol and then three, okay, one glycerol and then three fatty acid, and that is through the help of your lipases, okay? So the same hydrolysis reaction can take place outside the organism with an acid or a base as your catalyst, okay? So again, in the hydrolysis of your triglyceride, it is important for it to be utilized as a form of energy. If you guys could go back doon sa notes ninyo in carbohydrates, the pathway that I gave you on the lower left, you would see there triglyceride will be divided into glycerol and glycerol will enter your, your pathway similarly to your fatty acid entering your Krebs cycle. Okay, entering your Krebs cycle. So those are already the three forms, okay? The three forms of fatty acid. We talk about your fatty acid, your lipids rather, your fatty acid, your phospholipid, your triglyceride. All of them can be utilized as energy source, okay? Now let's go to the last type of carbohydrate, last type of lipid, which are your cholesterol. So cholesterol, these are non, uh, not a source of fuel because it is not catabolized by animals. When we say catabolized, we cannot break down your uh, cholesterol. Your cholesterol contains four rings in a single um, carboxyl chain tail similar to your fatty acid. Magkamukha sila kay fatty acid. Um, it is a precursor. Ayan. Precursor of five major classes of steroids such as your progestins, glucocorticoids, mineralocorticoids, androgen, and your estrogen. Makikilagay, an example of your glucocorticoids are your cortisol. An example of your mineralocorticoids are your aldosterone. Okay? Your aldosterone. So androgens, these are your sex hormones, and of course your uh, estrogen. When we say androgens, these are male hormones like testosterone. Ayan. So those are your androgens. And aside from that, your cholesterol is also found in the surface of your lipid bilayer and it is synthesized by your liver. Again, this might be a, a, um, a, a new information for some of you. Yes, cholesterol are synthesized by our liver. Okay, you create cholesterol just as how, uh, yes, you do eat um food with cholesterol but you also produces cholesterol in the body okay so yun yung isa sa mga bagay na kailangan ninyong ma-realize today that cholesterol is not only being um uh not only from your diet it also is produced by your um liver okay so much about that in a short while <clears throat> So this is your um, cholesterol. Again, you have um, four rings, one, two, three, four. And they are precursor to your steroid hormones, okay? So like testosterone, estradiol, and progesterone. So estradiol, um, estradiol, why do we say na estradiol? So I want you to uh, I want you to read on that because your estrogen has three forms. Your estrone, estradiol, and estriol. Okay? So there are three forms of estrogens. Okay? So much of that kapag nandun na tayo sa CC2 next semester. Hopefully, I'll see all of you there. Okay. So in cholesterol, ayan, in cholesterol, there are also two forms of cholesterol. We have your cholesterol esters and we also have your free cholesterol. So cholesterol ester are 70% of the total cholesterol in the body and free cholesterol only comprise 30%. So mas madami po ang ating cholesterol ester. So cholesterol esters are uh, composed of cholesterol uh, cholesterol ring and a fatty acid. It undergoes esterification by your LGAT. What is LGAT? It is your lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase that catalyzes the esterification. When we say esterification, the binding. The esterification of cholesterol by promoting the transfer of fatty acids from your lecithin to your cholesterol, which result now in the formation of your lysolecithin and your cholesterol esters. Okay? Now, I want you to remember that your cholesterol esters, okay, your cholesterol esters 
being now, being a type of cholesterol with a fatty acid chain, remember your fatty acid kasi has a hydrophobic, hydrophobic and a hydrophilic part, your cholesterol esters are actually hydrophilic. Okay? They're hydrophilic, meaning to say they are polar. They are These are polar cholesterol. Your cholesterol esters, again, are polar cholesterol, meaning to say water-loving, hydrophilic. On the other end of the spectrum, you also have your free cholesterol. Your free cholesterol, these are unesterified cholesterol. When we say unesterified cholesterol, mag-isa lang siya. These are just simply your cholesterol. Cholesterol lang siya. There are no other fatty acids attached to it. These are just plain unsterified cholesterol. When we say unesterified, unbound, it's just cholesterol on its own. Okay? So these are usually found on the surface of your lipoprotein. Sir, bakit? Why, do, why are they found in the surface of your lipoprotein? Lipoprotein, these are already the carrier molecule, correct? The carrier molecule. So your lipoprotein needs to carry your free cholesterol because they are hydrophobic. They cannot be transported in your body on their own. So they need your lipoproteins to transport them all throughout your body. Okay? So are we clear with the two different types of cholesterol? Can I just see a raise of any for clear, people? You have your free cholesterol and your cholesterol esters. So please, please remember that, ha? Please remember that. Now, Okay, so just a quick ano, no? So how does your body produces your cholesterol? So cholesterol are actually from your acetyl coenzyme A. Yes, the very same, uh, the very same acetyl co, uh, co A in the Krebs cycle. Okay, your the convert your your acetyl coenzyme A will undergo not the Krebs cycle but your beta oxidation. Okay, when we say beta oxidation, this is the attachment of fatty acid into your acetyl CoA. Okay, so conversion of acetyl CoA is derived from the beta oxidation of your fatty acid. Now, that acetyl CoA will undergo oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate to become beta hydroxy beta methyl glutaryl CoA or your HMG CoA. Okay, your hydroxy uh, beta. Methyl glutaryl CoA, this is now the precursor of your uh, cholesterol. Your MHG CoA will be converted to mevalonic acid through the help of your MHG CoA reductase. And the cycle will just go on and on until your mevalonic acid becomes your squalene, and your squalene becomes now your cholesterol. Okay, so again, let me repeat that. So from your acetyl CoA, it will undergo beta oxidation. Acetyl coenzyme A will undergo beta oxidation. Form um, beta oxidation, um, forming now your rather your fatty acids. Your fatty acid would undergo beta oxidation, forming your acetyl CoA, and your acetyl CoA will undergo oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate. Uh, forming now your MHG CoA. Your MHG CoA will also undergo um, further oxidative decarboxylation. Pare parehas lang ng process. Oxidative decarboxylation forming now your mevalonic acid. Okay? And then, oh, eventually, ayan, it will now become your mevalonic acid and then your squalene and then eventually becoming now your cholesterol. Sir, why did you highlight the HMG-CoA reductase? Okay? So, a quick and a very important um, lesson for everybody. Your MHG-CoA, okay, your MHG-CoA is an enzyme being inhibited by your statins. What are statins? Statins, these are actually the component of your maintenance. Yung mga iniinom ng tatay, nanay ninyo, Yung mga simbastatin, yung mga ganon, those are all statins. So statins, these are uh, medication okay, that will inhibit your MHG-CoA so that your cholesterol levels will be decreased. Okay? So that the production of your cholesterol in the body will be decreased. Can I see a raise of hand if we're clear in that sense? 
So, sir, how do I stop? How do I prevent my cholesterol from increasing? You take your statin, your simvastatin, whatever brand or whatever um, generic brand your parents or your loved ones are using, all of them are the same. They all um, inhibit your MHG-CoA. What is MHG-CoA? Hydroxy, uh, methyl, glutaryl coa Okay? That is your MHG-CoA. Okay? So, what are they um what are they inhibiting in specific okay hmg coa reductase be specific with the reductase huh so yan yung enzyme that they are inhibiting so if you take statin your mhg coa will be inhibited there will be no product uh, there will be cessation in the production of your mevalonic acid so kapag wala ng mevalonic acid cholesterol cannot be produced inside your body can i see a raise of hand if we're clear Okay, there's only a few. So are we clear or not? Okay, so again, ha, statins are being taken so that it inhibit your MHG-CoA reductase and then decrease eventually the level of your cholesterol. Okay, so with that, okay, it's already 11.23. So let's just have a quick uh, two-minute break. Okay, let's have a quick two-minute break. So, ayan. If you have questions or clarification, please type it in on the chat box and then I'll try to answer when we return. <clears throat> Okay, so let's um, continue our discussion. Okay, so can I see a raise of hand if everybody are still here? Pataas na kamay. Okay, so we have time pa. So the question, sir, ano ulit yung sabi nyo kanina sa glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids? So example of your glucocorticoids, your glucocorticoids, um, are your cortisol, example, cortisol, and then your mineralocorticoid, these are your aldosterone. All of, both of them are also steroid hormone. Okay? <clears throat> steroid hormones. Okay. So now moving forward, let's proceed to the general lipoprotein structure. Okay? So the general lipoprotein structure. So let's get started. So again, just like what I was mentioning kanina, your lipoproteins are large macromolecules, okay? Large ma macromolecular complexes of lipids with specialized protein known as apolipoprotein. So let's try to explain and decode that one by one later. So your lipoproteins, again, um, in its simplest definition, these are the transport protein for your lipids. Again, your lipoprotein are your transport protein 
for lipids. What? Why lipids? Because some lipids, okay, that what that we discussed a while back, some of them are hydrophobic, some of them are hydrophilic. Some of the hydrophobic um fatty, some of the hydrophobic lipids that needs um your lipoprotein are number one, your triglyceride. Okay, your triglyceride, even though it's a neutral fat, it is very hydrophobic. And aside from that, your cholesterol, more specifically, your free cholesterol. When we say free cholesterol, they are not bound to anything. Okay, so these are very hydrophobic. And in, in contrary, you know, ironically, these um, lipids are very important in the development and the, and the metabolism of human. That's why they need your carrier protein for them to be delivered all throughout your body. So, sinong gumagawa nun? Who does the job that these are your lipoproteins? So, having said that your lipoproteins are carrier protein, okay? The specific, okay? The specialized protein found on your lipoproteins are what we call your apo lipoprotein. Okay? Again, very important for you to take note that your apo lipoprotein, it is the protein portion of your lipoprotein. Can I see a raise of hand if we're clear in that part? Kasi baka nalilito sa terms. Again ha, apo lipoprotein is the protein portion of your lipoprotein protein. <clears throat> Similarly in your enzyme, your enzyme is a is an entire structure but the the protein part of your enzyme, we call it your apo enzyme, okay? We call it not apo enzyme, your holo enzyme rather. Okay? That is your apo enzyme, apo enzyme. Okay? So remember that. So again, your lipoprotein, the main purpose is to transport triglyceride and cholesterol to sites of energy storage and utilization. Again, site of energy storage, where will they be stored? Or cells, where will they be utilized as energy sources? Okay? These are your lipoproteins. And there are different compositions. Okay? When we say composition, there are five. The one that you see here, okay, there are... I will just um put a ano, put a um a mark there are actually four four major classes of plasma protein but in your henrys they included your IDL your IDL is your intermediate density lipoprotein okay so there are different um lipoproteins what are the different lipoproteins so ladies and gentlemen let me introduce to you your lipoproteins, your major lipoproteins. So we'll follow Henry's na lang. I, in, I will include your IDL. So according to Henry's, the five major lipoproteins are as follow. Your chylomicrons, your VLDL, VLDL also known as your very low density lipoprotein, your IDL, your intermediate density lipoprotein, your LDL, which is your low density lipoprotein, and finally, ladies and gentlemen, your HDL, also known as your high density lipoprotein and i want you to familiarize yourself with this specific table not to memorize the numbers but i want you to um generally see the um the structure or the component of each of your each of your um each of your um lipoproteins okay so let's start with your chylomicrons your chylomicrons are considered to be the main uh, mamaya iisa-isa ko naman to okay they are actually the main um uh, transporter of your triglyceride what type of triglyceride kaya yan later we'll talk about that aside from that your VLDL as you can see your VLDL they also can carry a little bit of your cholesterol but majority is your triglyceride again people of the Philippines, children of the universe, okay? Uh, please take note that what I'm trying to highlight here are the major lipid they are carrying. Again, the major lipid they are carrying. Because as you can see in this particular, um, in this particular table, all of them 
all, all of them really carry a little bit of everything. They carry a little bit of cole, a little bit of phospholipid on the side, a little bit of co cholesterol ester on the side. But the point is, what we are trying to identify here are the main lipid that they are carrying. Can I see a raise of hand if we're clear? What is the main type of lipid they are carrying? So for your chylomicrons, these are your triglycerides. For your VLDL, these are also your triglyceride. And later, I'll explain the difference between your chylomicrons and your VLDL. But in that sense, you would see that between the two, diba? between the two, the, the major paren will be your, your chylomicron because your uh, VLDL, okay, also carry a little bit of cholesterol and even phospholipid. Then you have your IDL. Your IDL is just an intermediate molecule in between your VLDL and your LDL. That's why uh, on my take, I don't all I don't usually consider it a lipopro a major lipoprotein. Kasi nga, it's just a, a phase in the life of your LDL. Okay? Your VLDL kasi, your VLDL will be converted into becoming your LDL. And in between that is your IDL. Okay, nagets nyo ba yon? Si VLDL naging IDL naging LDL. Yun yung life cycle ng buhay ni LDL. Okay? But moving forward, ayan na nga, your LDL on the other hand, the major uh, lipid it carries are your cholesterol esters. In some book, um, in most of the books, they just simply call it your cholesterol. Your LDL is the major um, carrier molecule for your LDL for your cholesterol. But if we're going to be more specific, these are actually cholesterol esters. Cholesterol esters in the body. Sir, bakit cholesterol esters? Eh, di ba, sabi mo kanina, ang, kail ang may kailangan ng pag... Ang the, the type of cholesterol that needs your uh, transport protein the most are your free cholesterol. Yes, I'm not backing up that statement. Okay, I'm not removing that statement. But the, the reason why your LDL carries more cholesterol esters is because what? Your cholesterol esters are more abundant in the body. They are 70% in the body. Okay? So, are you, did you get my point there? Why even though free cholesterol are the one, are the one needing most of your lipoprotein, okay, lipoprotein, pinakamadami pa rin si cholesterol ester. It is because, again, ano sabi natin? Your cholesterol esters are what? They are, um, they are the most abundant in the body. And finally, okay, we have your HDL. Your HDL, um, your HDL carries your cholesterol. Sir, what, what, you say cholesterol, but it's only 15 to 20%. Yes. Um, but the majority majority of your HDL is actually composed of your apolipoprotein. It is composed of 45 to 55%. And I will explain why um, HDL has that kind of characteristic. Can everybody uh, hear me loud and clear? Can I say a raise of hand? Okay. So here's the thing about your LDL and your HDL. I guess by this time, you already are familiar with the term bad cholesterol and good cholesterol. Bad cholesterol is the term we denote for your LDL or your low-density lipoprotein. Are they really bad? Should I remove it altogether in my body? I would say no. Why? Because again, the only time that they become bad is when they become in excess in your body. Your HDL, these are good cholesterol. Good cholesterol, why? Ito na, here's the kwento. Okay, your LDL are a type of lipoprotein that delivers your cholesterol. Remember your cholesterol, like what we mentioned in our discussion a while back, they are synthesized by your liver, correct? Being synthesized in your liver, eventually, okay, eventually, okay, after being synthesized in your liver, they would need to be delivered in its proper uh, in the proper places where they will be utilized correct so how will this cholesterol be transferred from the liver going to the different types of your going to the different parts of your body that is through the help of your ldl 
Okay, your low density lipoprotein are the one that delivers your cholesterol to all your cells, to all the different organs that might need cholesterol or that might need it in their cell membrane or that might need it in in like for example in the organs, your adrenal gland, okay, that will utilize them as a precursor for hormone production. Are you getting my point now? So in a, in a sense, LDL was not bad in the first place. Okay? They are actually very important in the body. It's just that when LDL are in excess, they get depos they get deposited in the different parts of your body. Example of that, a very common is in your heart. Are you getting my point now? Can I see a raise of hand if we're clear? Now, those who are listening asynchronously, if you have questions, please feel free to rewind it or send me a question through the chat. So that's the, that's the quent of your LDL. Now, why did we call HDL the good daughter? Hindi good daughter, the good cholesterol. The good cholesterol, it is for this reason. Diba LDL? LDL is the one that delivers the cholesterol from the liver going to the different parts of your body where it will be stored or utilized. Now, what would what is the job of your HDL? HDL is known for the reverse pathway. When we say reverse pathway, HDL is the one that collects excess cholesterol in the body and will return it back to the liver. Okay? That is the reason why we call it your good cholesterol. It is also a cardio uh, protective component, a cardio protective molecule because it will prevent you from having cardiovascular diseases. That's why we call it your good cholesterol. It will collect the excess cholesterol, okay? And then will return it back to the liver. Okay? So take for example, diba? Take for example, LDL LDL's job is just to deliver. It doesn't mind if it is in excess or not. What I will do is to deliver. Deliver, deliver, deliver all throughout the body. And then, of course, there will be some, okay, there will be some that will just be taking a few, okay, and then there will be excess. And that will now be the job of your HDL. It is the, the one that will clean up the excess cholesterol in the body. Now, sir, if I do have that, that mechanism inside my body. Why is it that some people still develop cardiovascular diseases? And this is the funny part about it. Your LDL and your HDL are inversely proportional. If your LDL starts to be in, if your LDL production increases, your HDL goes down. So in a sense, if you eat a lot of cholesterol, okay, if you eat a lot of cholesterol, if you eat a lot of fat, if you are living unhealthy lifestyles, your your body will create uh, will produce more cholesterol, paving way to an increased LDL and a decreased HDL. That's why there will not be enough HDL to clean up the excess in your body. Now, are we clear people? Malinaw po ba tayo? Oh, everyone, can I see a raise of hand if we're clear in that part? Although, don't worry. On the second part of our discussion, next meeting, um, I will be discussing there the, the lipo, the lipid pathway from absorption, from the moment you eat your, your food, from being digested in the body, being absorbed, absorbed in the, in the, in the, intestines, and then how does it become now from their chylomicrons, whatsoever. Okay? So, clear tayo doon. So, I hope, no, you are, the foundations for lipids and lipoprotein are very much clear to you now. Okay? Because as we move along, if you are, uh, if you're quite lost in the middle, you'll have a hard time understanding the succeeding topics. Okay? So, again, it's important that you know the reason why I first discussed the characteristic of your lipid so that you would know um, easier that lipoproteins are very much important. Now, let's talk about the different lipoproteins. So, your lipoproteins are like this. Okay? Um, this is your general lipoprotein. Of course, you have your hydrophobic core. 
Okay? This is where you see your cholesterol ester, your fatty acid, fatty acids, and even your triglycerides. This is where you would store, okay? They would um, carry the lipids that they need to transport. So this is your apolipoprotein. Your apolipoprotein is specific for each of your, um, they are specific for each of your, um, what do you call this? They are specific for a, for your lipoproteins. So if you have your chylomicrons, you have your ApoB48. Apo, Apo if you have your VLDL, LDL, that is ApoB100. And then for HDL, that is ApoA1. Okay, your apo A1. Now, maybe some of you are wondering, sir, how do how do we know? Okay, how would I know? Okay, how would I know if the lipid the the one that I'm seeing right now is a chylomicron, a um, a VLDL and LDL or an HDL? Well, simple. There are two methods on how we can determine the lipoprotein. And listen up now. Okay, these are very important. Okay, there are two ways on how we can determine them. The first, that is through ultra centrifugation, and the next one is through electrophoretic mobility. I will explain this further in our next discussion. I just want you guys to see this so that you would know how do we classify your lipoprotein. We classify them first through their buoyant density. Okay, which one is the lightest? Which one is the heaviest? Obviously, the, the principle here is that. The more protein they have, the heavier they are. The less protein, the lighter they are. And again, I will go back to this. As you can see, you would know which one is the lightest and which one is the heaviest based on the protein component. Okay? So that's the first um, way of di differentiating or classifying your lipoproteins through their buoyant density. Okay? And the process is what we call your ultra centrifugation again your ultra centrifugation on the other end okay you can also classify your lipoproteins according to their electrophoretic mobility again electrophoretic mobility now in your electrophoretic mobility aside from their charge okay aside from the charge of the molecule another way on how we also classify your molecules in this particular sensor lipoprotein is through their size okay through their size so here we are now able to differentiate the different lipoproteins according to their um sizes and as you can see guys sir um, on the on on the left, okay, on the left picture, the name were VLDL, low density, very low density, high density. Why is it that in the electrophoretic pattern, I am seeing now beta lipoprotein, I am seeing now pre beta lipoprotein, I am seeing now alpha lipoprotein. Which one is HDL here? Which one is VLDL here? Which one is LDL here? Those are the things that we aim to answer by the end of this meeting, even if I only have 15 minutes left for this discussion. Um, can I ask a favor? Can I extend siguro like mga 10 minutes lang, if ever? Will it be okay? Can I see a raise of hand? If ever lang, if I need it, okay? So, can I see a raise of hand if it's okay? 10 minutes lang, okay? Para hindi potol, para, I mean, hindi, uh, the the flow in your mind will also be um, better. Okay? So, later ha, babalikan natin to. We'll go back to this in a short while. So, first, let's talk about your chylomicrons. Your chylomicrons, they're no problem because your chylomicron, you see this on the topmost because it's the lightest. You see this on the origin. Why do we see it on the origin? Because it didn't move. Why? Because it's the largest lipoprotein. Now, I would introduce to you your chylomicrons. Your chylomicrons are considered to be the largest yet the least dense among all lipoproteins. It is the lipoprotein with the lowest density, meaning the lightest. And in our discussion late a um, few slides ago, okay, we mentioned that chylomicrons are the ca major carrier molecule for your triglyceride. And I want to be very, very specific. These are 
um, triglycerides that are exogenous by nature. The, your chylomicrons are the one that transport your exogenous triglycerides. Sir, what do you mean by exogenous triglycerides? Exogenous triglycerides meaning to say these are the triglycerides that came from your diet. Like take for example, later by 12.10, you'll eat your lunch. And of course, there are fats there. Once that it uh, goes to your body, into your intestine, it will be absorbed in your bloodstream and it will be transported by your chylomicrons. Okay? Again, these are your exogenous triglycerides. Meaning to say, sir, meron palang endogenous triglycerides. Yes, much of that when we go to your VLDL. Okay? So again, your chylomicrons, they are produced in your intestines and they are completely cleared within 6 to 9 hours post-pranjal which explain a 10-hour fasting for your lipid profile. Can I see a raise of any for clear? So it, is it making sense now that your chylomicrons are the one that carry the exogenous triglyceride that came from my diet, that came from my food. Now it would take around 6 to 9 hours before it can be cleared out in the body. Well, some of you would say, sir, 6 to 9 hours pala, why is it that the fasting hours is, 10, is still 10 hours? That is to standardize all your um, fasting na. Okay? So the fasting for your lipid profile is 10 hours. Okay? The minimum is 10 hours. Okay, and that is not for your cole, but more for your triglyceride. Can I see a raise of any for clear? Malinaw ba tayo? Okay, so we're clear. Now, having said that, okay, having said that, okay, when present in high levels, as you can see, if your triglycerides are present in high level in your body, it will create an appearance of a milky, Okay, it will ha it will create um, an appearance of a milky plasma, and it will accumulate on top. Okay, creating a floating creamy layer when left undistributed for several hours. Okay, so that your chylomicrons, okay, your chylomicrons are the one responsible for the milky appearance of your plasma. Okay, pag milky yung appearance, it is your plasma. Okay? I'll say this na lang, no, para mabilis tayo. If your serum or your plasma looks milky, it is because of your triglyceride. If it is look, if it looks turbid, that is more probably due to your um, cholesterol. Okay? That is due to your cholesterol. Now, okay? So, when present at high level, sabi nga natin, milking appearance, again, the major composition of your chylomicrons is 90% triglyceride and only 9, 1 to 2% um, protein. Okay? So, 90% triglyceride, meaning to say, more specific, these are your, these are your exogenous triglyceride. Sir, do we need to specify it in our quiz and in our exam? Yes. Okay? I'm very particular with this. Okay? So, your chylomicron carries your exogenous triglyceride. Okay? So, talking about the apolipoprotein, there is a 1 to 2% protein in your chylomicron. So, the apolipoproteins in your chylomicron include your apo B48. It also has apo A1 and apo A4, apo C1, C2, C3, and apo E. So, ang dami namang memorize. Hindi naman yan madami because what I want you lang to remember is your apo B48 because this is the major apo lipoprotein for your chylomicrons. Can I see a raise of any for clear, people? Are we clear? Okay. Now, aside from your chylomicrons, again, your chylomicrons, the lightest, okay, the lightest, the largest, it carries your exogenous triglyceride, it causes your blood to be milky, it is produced in your intestine, apo B48, done. Okay? Now let's go to your VLDL. Your VLDL, okay, your very low density lipoprotein, your very low, your VLDL is derived from your ultra centrifugation. These are names derived from your ultra centrifugation. Okay? So your, your VLDL, your very low density lipoprotein, are also known as your pre beta lipoprotein. Okay? Your pre-beta lipoprotein. So, balikan natin. This is your VLDL. Right after chylomicron, it is your VLDL. But here, 
it will change. Because right after your chylomicron, this is your beta lipoprotein or your LDL, your pre-beta lipoprotein, these are your VLDL. Okay? These are your VLDL. Now, bago pa kayo malito at bago pa kayo magpanic, your VLDL, again, is your pre-beta lipoprotein. So, your VLDL are particles that are produced in the liver. Okay? Almost all. Your VLDL, LDL, HDL, lahat sila sa liver except for your chylomicrons produced in the lactyl cells of your intestine. Okay? So, as you can see here, okay, your VLDL particles are produced in the liver. So, they supply the tissue um, of the tissues of the body with triglycerides of endogenous, primarily hepatic origin and triglycerides. What, do we, what are we trying to say here? Yes, your liver is also able to produce triglyceride. And in this particular sense, these are your endogenous triglyceride. Okay? These are your endogenous triglyceride. So your VLDL contains 50% triglyceride, 40% cholesterol, 10% protein, and a density of 0.95 to 1.005 kilogram per liter. Okay? So this is now your VLDL. To wrap it up, your VLDL is also known as your pre-beta lipoprotein. It is produced by the liver. It carries your endogenous triglyceride, mainly your endogenous triglyceride, although a little bit of cholesterol and also protein. Now, when it comes to your VLDL, the major apolipoprotein for your um, VLDL is your ApoB. 100. Again, your APO B 100, but you can also see your APO E. Kung makikita ninyo, there are some overlap, but I want only to highlight what is unique to them. In your chylomicron, it is your APO B 48. In your VLDL, it is your APO B 100. Can I see a raise of hand before I proceed to your LDL? Done na sa VLDL. Clear? Okay, good. I hope you're remembering the characteristics, huh? Because they, these are very important. Okay? So, next. We also have your LDL. Your L... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> your LDL, okay, your LDL, also known as your beta lipoprotein, also known, also known as your bad cholesterol. Hopefully, na-explain ko naman sa inyo yung function niya kanina. So your LDL is produced through the metabolism of your VLDL. So from your VLDL, it will become your IDL, intermediate density lipoprotein, and will become LDL. Okay? So 50% of your VLDL kasi will be converted to your LDL. So LDL is produced through the metabolism of your LDL and constitute 50% of the total lipoprotein mass in human plasma. So it transports the cholesterol from the liver to the peripheral tissue. Ladies and gentlemen, I was the one who discussed cholesterol in the laboratory. So I did mention there that the reason why we do not have fasting for cholesterol, it is because of this reason. The cholesterol that we are measuring in the laboratory are the one produced by your liver and not the one from your diet. Are you getting me? Can I see a raise of hand if we're clear? Again, ha, the cholesterol being measured in your lipid profile are the cholesterol produced by the body and not from your diet. Okay? So, ayan, it transports your, your cholesterol from the liver to your peripheral tissue for utilization and also storage in some cases. So, about 50% of the total lipoprotein in the plasma are LDL, majority sila. Okay? So, as you can see, um, the APO lipoprotein that we usually see are your APO B100, yes. The same with your VLDL, okay? And then your APO C, okay? They're also known as your bad cholesterol, okay? So again, um, that is your low-density lipoprotein. And finally, finally, we have your high-density lipoprotein. Your high-density lipoprotein is your HDL. Your HDL also known as your alpha lipoprotein. Okay? Your alpha lipoprotein. So it is the smallest. That's why it is the fastest. But it is the heaviest because it has the most percentage of 
apolipoprotein or protein in their structure. So it is produced by the liver and also by the intestines. Okay? And they can exist either in this shape or spherical uh, particle. I will explain the this shape and spherical particles next meeting in the pathway. So why this? Why spherical? It has something to do with the conformation that it needs para makapag-collect siya ng excess cholesterol. Okay? So, HDL is involved in the reverse, ayan, yung sabi ko kanina, reverse cholesterol transport. Why? Because if LDL delivers the cholesterol from the liver going to the tissue, HDL will do the reverse. It will collect the excess cholesterol from the tissue going back to the liver. And the major lipoprotein, ladies and gentlemen, are your ApoA1. Okay? These are your ApoA1. So these are they are also known as your good cholesterol because they provide a cardioprotective, they are a cardioprotective agent, meaning to say the higher your HDL is, the less chances that you would that you will develop a cardiovascular disease. Okay? Now, aside from that, there are also subclasses of your um, HDL. Your, um, according to density, you have your HDL2 and HDL3. Um, according to surface charge, we have your pre-beta, pre-alpha, and alpha. So these are just minor, okay? These are just minor, ano ah, minor, um, these are just minor details about your HDL. One thing that I want you to remember um, on the other hand, we have your pre-beta HDL. Okay, your pre-beta HDL is also known as your lipid poor ApoA1. Okay, your your lipid poor ApoA1, meaning to say, it is a type of HDL that has very low ApoA1. It cannot perform its function. Okay, it cannot perform its function. So, yun yung ano natin. Okay, so I guess I'm I will not be uh, I won't be extending too long, but before we go, okay, let's have some active recall, okay? So I want everybody to answer on your chat box or wherever you are while, while you're listening to this, whether synchronous or asynchronous. So let's um, have an active recall. I'll flash it and then uh, you tell me what um, lipoprotein are we pertaining to, Okay. The lipoprotein that is considered to be the least dense. Anyone? Okay. On the chat box, everybody. Least dense. These are your... Okay, five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. What is the answer, people of the universe? Okay, these are your chylomicrons. Okay, what is the most dense? Most dense na ano? Most dense na... Ano natin? Most dense na lipoprotein. Most dense. It is your... Okay, good. I'm seeing answers. These are your HDL. What is the other name for your HDL? Other name for HDL. Good cholesterol. Aside from good cholesterol, based on electrophoretic pattern, what is the other name of your HDL? Based on electrophoretic pattern, these are your... Alpha lipoprotein. Okay. Next. What lipoprotein carries your exogenous triglyceride? What lipoprotein carries your exogenous triglyceride? These are your, what? Your chylomicrons. Correct. Okay. Your chylomicrons. What about your endogenous triglyceride? What are the main carrier molecule of your endogenous triglyceride? Carrier molecule of endogenous triglyceride. Five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. That is your VLDL. What is the other name for your VLDL or other name for your very low density lipoprotein? What is the other name for your uh, VLDL? That is your, okay. Five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, okay, I'm seeing answer. That's correct. It's your pre-beta lipoprotein. Pre-beta. Na, okay, VLDL. What about your good cholesterol? Good cholesterol is also known as your, ano, good cholesterol is HDL. Ah, 
May nakita kong iba? Okay, may naiibang sagot. Okay, hindi yan chylomicrons. Ha? Your good cholesterol, okay, is your HDL. Your bad cholesterol, which one is your bad cholesterol, people? Bad cholesterol now is your LDL. Okay, your bad cholesterol is your H LDL. Okay, so I hope you remember that, ha? But before we go, let me just uh, try to reiterate this. As you can see, your chylomicrons, okay, it is the lightest, it's the largest. Um, I want, I just want to show this because there is a, uh, a, an exchange in the position. If you are pertaining to the ultra centrifugation, lightest to heaviest, lightest to heaviest, it is your chylomicron, VLDL, LDL, HDL. But if we're pertaining to your electrophoretic mobility, it is your chylomicrons, your beta lipoprotein, your pre-beta lipoprotein, and your alpha lipoprotein. And if I'm going to put it in um, using their buoyant density, this is your LDL, okay? This is your VLDL, okay? This is your VLDL. Are you getting my point? That's why I need to reiterate this part just so you won't, interchange the two as we go along okay so thank you so so that's it for today thank you so much for listening so um here's our i know here's our references so thank you so much for listening so if you don't have any questions or clarification um i will be ending this recording already and i'll see you on our next meeting okay